Hey everybody, it's Pauline here and um, I have got a surprise for you. Well, actually it's not a surprise because I've got um, Irene Gronwell coming up and just gonna wait for her to come in. Hey everybody, hi. Um, how you doing, Kate, nature lover? Wow, it's so cool to see you guys. Yeah, it's great. Well, I'm just waiting for Irene to come in. Got an inter... Oh, here she comes. Great. Just waiting. Hey, Irene, how are you? Hi. Hi, I'm fine. Thank you. You just got to pull your camera back a little bit so we can see your face. There. Can you see me now? Um... Shall a I can... lower, I think. There, there. Yeah, there. there we go. I can't see you. Oh, that's unusual. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, what do I do? You're doing good. I can see you, and let me just see if you are on. If I check out um, Instagram here on my iPad. I'll see that we can see you. Let's just take a look. Yeah, I can see you quite nicely on my iPad, so I'm not quite sure why you can't see me, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know what I should do. There's there's a circle going spinning around. Oh, well, maybe it's thinking. Yeah, maybe it's thinking. <laughs> can, you, can you chat um, not seeing me? Oops. Um, uh, yeah, I can chat. I don't mind if I don't see you. It okay. would be nice to see you. I know, I know. Um, but we only have an hour. <laughs> so. so I don't know what to do. Uh, no, I don't know what to do. Should That's I okay. switch? Okay. What I would recommend is to just go with the flow. We can see you. All right. And maybe your your phone is catching up. Yeah. Um, so we'll just start and um, say hi to everybody. I can see that you're here. I'll show you. There's, they can see the both of us. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so that's good. So, hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I have Irene Gronwall. Did I, did I pronounce that right? Well, it's in Swedish we say Grönvall, but it's Grönvall. That's fine. That's fine. I'm cool with that. Irene Kronvall is yeah. with us. And I have been following Irene, I don't know how long, but I love her work. And I thought it would be so much fun to have a conversation with her. Now, Irene and I had a chat earlier this week, but it was the first time that we actually um, talked. So I got to know a little bit more about her, but I thought it would be fun to ask her some questions and she can share with you so you'll get to know her a little bit better too. If you haven't gone to her Instagram um, grid, go check it out after the interview. You'll have a chance to ask questions. Um, I've got the questions coming up. So um, I had um, asked Irene to talk a little bit and what I really want to just say first, thanks for being brave and doing this because this is both of our first. I've done interviews where people have um, asked me questions, but the but I've instigated this, so it's it's fun and new for the both of us. So thank you very much, Irene. I really appreciate it. I love being here. I was, it, I'm really grateful for you asking me. I I don't do these things. I am not very good at technique, so I uh, I'm trusting that you know what you're doing. Uh, I'm just sitting. <laughs> Well, like we artists often do, we try new things out. And so, and I run a, a couple of um, groups and I'm always suggesting that artists just try things out uh, because by exploring is how you find more about yourself, more things out about yourself. So thank you again. And I'm going to start with my first question to just share like, where are you from? I know, but maybe um, my listeners don't know. And also um, wrap that into uh, when and how you started painting. Well, I'm Swedish. I live in Sweden. I live in Stockholm. I'm sitting here in my studio in Stockholm. 
and um, well I really started out uh, my father was a painter so I was always surrounded by paintings and and the smell of, of oil paint uh, but I chose a different career to start with so I am a I am an actress that's how I trained I trained as an actress in London okay. and uh, yeah and um, Shakespearean actress so that was my that was my start that was my first how do you say uh, artistic um, training it's Mm -hmm. And but I always uh, I always uh, I was drawing and I was painting all along, of course, but I didn't find that as a, I didn't do that as a career to start with. So uh, and and my father was a painter, so that was his domain, if you see what I mean. It was uh, it was not really um, appropriate to compete with him in his oh. history. So, sure. yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. Now that would have been, I'm going to interrupt for a second. That would have been really interesting actually, because I do know other artists who have had a parent or sibling that paints and some of them have found it supportive and some of them have found it downright distracting. Mm, mm. I, I don't, I'm not so sure. My father died quite young, so he never saw much of what I did. Okay. But I did, uh, my first exhibition, I was thinking about him a lot. I felt he was there. And I felt I was, you know, it should have been him, not me. Uh, he's the painter. I'm not the painter. So, uh, um, but I'm sure that had he lived, I think he would have been supportive. Mind you, he was a, he was a, what do you call it, fine art. He, um, not fine art. Uh, the, the, he, he painted naturalistically. Yeah, and, representative. yeah, representative, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. at least until up to, you know, a couple of years before he died, then he started to experimenting, which was quite nice. So he never had um, the chance to really develop that, which was a shame, um, yeah. apart yeah. from him dying young, of course. Yeah. Uh, but I think he would have liked me painting. I'm not so sure he would have liked my paintings. Well, maybe but, if he'd explored more, maybe he would. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think perhaps you're right. Yeah, yeah, I think so. But he was, he was very, he was also a musician. I don't play any instrument. Uh, so he, he had many strings on his, uh, what do you call it? In, Swed in Swedish, we say many strings on your, on your guitar, or on your lute okay. or whatever. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. So you started as an actor and then you got into painting. Do you remember the transition or the curiosity, how you, you launched in, into that? Well, it, it so happened. Um, I, I, uh, I had to quit um, acting uh, because as I told you, Pauline, and it's not a secret, I have a disabled child. And it's very difficult when you, when you act in a big theater as I did you're constantly rehearsing or playing right uh, you can stay so uh that was not possible anymore uh so i got into painting uh, when my child was about three or four really more than i had done before i always painted okay uh, when, uh, but that it was easier for me to to uh work my time and what to do with my time because, you know, as an actor, you go on stage regardless of what, you know, almost like you go on stage any, any for, for, there's no reason not to go unless you've broken your leg or something. So right. you don't go on. So uh, it was impossible for me. Mind you, I did, I did some uh, acting. Uh, I mean, that the things that I could do would decide myself, you know, like a, a TV series or odd productions, but... Uh, on the whole, I didn't, I couldn't work in a, in a big theater anymore. Right. And when you started painting, um, I'm guessing, obviously, that you painted from home so that you could care for your daughter. Yeah. But, yeah. So, um, uh, do you, were you working in oils and do you work in oils now? No, I started, I think I started in oils because I, I, I took out my father's old uh, painting, paint box. It had a, wooden paint box 
the turpentine and, and the oils, and they were still working. And this was, I don't know how many years after he died. So I started working with oil uh, and I found it very, very difficult. Oh yeah. And I, and I still do. I have done some, but I'm a bit curious to go back to oil, but I work fast and um, I can't wait, you know, and my studio is not big enough to have like 10 paintings going on at the same time. Right. Uh, so I can let most of them dry. Yeah. So that's why I work in, in acrylic because it, it dries fast and I work fast. I don't produce a lot, but I work fast. Right, right. So do you, uh, so do, how many paintings are you able to work at once with the size of your studio? Because you do paint large. Yeah, I paint large. Um, I can work with three, three maybe. Yeah, yeah. And then can you, do you work in a series where you work on one and let that dry and then you work on another or do you finish one and then move on? Mm. Now that's a tricky question. Uh, I, I, my series are very short. They're like two or three. Now I've done four, mm -hmm. but then I do, then I get bored and then I do something that is odd. I experiment and, and I, is one painting and I don't continue that series or pick it up later. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a bit, I don't know. I should maybe be more disciplined and work in series. But then again, that's who I am as a, as a, as a painter, as an artist. I can't force myself to make 10 paintings uh, in a series if I, if it doesn't interest me. And maybe, maybe that's my problem. Why doesn't it interest me to make 10 of them? I don't know. Well, that's do, you, do you, do you work on a long series? Yeah, I work on a lot of paintings at once. But first, I wanted to back up and say it's interesting how uh, we often get this should quite in our head as if there's some magic recipe for output because we are all unique individuals. And uh, But while I say this too, I want to also stress that I also get should questions in my head. And if I can catch them, I can direct them back to you what you should be doing is doing whatever you do that's what you're doing right yeah and i work in series because i like to uh follow my intuition but then i want to let it wait i want to let it dry and maybe even i want to let it tell me what the next move is and sometimes that could be days so I don't want to wait for that because I like working every day. So mm -hmm. I will work in a series. And I, I started doing that um, 2000, well, actually 2016 maybe. But recently I'm, I've got a several series going. And that just happened, uh, you know, this year because I was teaching a course and to keep myself juiced and get, get ideas with different colors, I started a couple series. But what that does is when I get bored with working on blue, which is in the back, I go to my red series and then I go have fun with that. But I, I also go small to larger. So, but it keeps me juiced. That's the thing. And yeah, get lost in one for whatever reason. We all know what that's like. We can get lost really easily. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Found and man, did we want to stay there then? But um, then I can just go pick a painting that I either loved and I couldn't touch it again. To, and now I don't love it so much anymore. So now I know what to do. Or I can just go to one of those paintings that I left off and I wasn't sure what to do. And it won't matter what I do because at least I do something, right? So mm -hmm. I do series because it gives me lots of, um, there's just so many ben benefits for me. And I did this when my studio was one fifth the size as well, but it got crowded mm -hmm. and I had to move the work out into the kitchen <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. No, uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, this question always comes up when I read about other artists and, and, and worries about I'm not doing long series and should I? Am I not an artist if I don't? Uh, I don't know. I remember reading about Helen Frankenthaler. Uh, you know, she did 
of course serious but she worked she experimented so much and yeah. she said something that i i read which i thought was so good uh, something like i've painted in so many different styles but i do hope that when i'm gone you can see who held the brush oh i love that so i think that's uh, i mean my friends and people that know me and know my work say oh, oh we can spot you a mile away so if it's you that painted it so i'm i I'm, i'm not so worried about that anymore i i try to paint um if it is a series if it interests me i'm doing something now that really interests me uh and i've done four i'm having an exhibition at the end of july so uh, in the south of sweden so uh, everybody pardon? will you tell us where so everyone who is nearby can go see it Yes, it's in Marstrand on the west coast. Marstrand, uh, uh, Strandverket is the name of the gallery. So if you're nearby, please come and see me and my and my paintings. Yeah, that would be lovely. Yes. And your studio? Are you able to swing your camera around for a second to show anything? Just so that people. Yeah. Can... Let me What? see. <laughs> oh, you know, I see. Yeah, you can see yourself. So, can you tip the camera like this? A little bit lower. There we go. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh wow! And this is this is. Uh, yeah. Can you see? Me? Yes, that's. This perfect. is what I'm working on at the moment. Can you see the work? Yeah. Beautiful. I love your work. I just love your work. And this is Let me see. Can you see this? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. So this this, this is I've done I've done four for I like the the just the position of the the spikes the the hard with a with a pastel. Yeah. Uh, and so this is what i'm working on at the moment so it, 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 it's 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 a series kind of series series and this is my my uh, can you see my all my stuff paint table you have to lower yeah, the here's another paint table oh fantastic can you, can you see it yeah and here are some other paintings that i I, I would like to, oops, can you see that one? Yes, that's beautiful, the black and white one. Yes, I love working wow. in black and white. So this is, I would like to continue on that series. Uh, I might do one more, actually, yeah. if I have time before the exhibition. And this is an older piece. Yeah. Gosh, darn it, I really, wow, these are awesome. So, And these are some more back here. This is my the pile oh, of you. pile of stuff that I will be taking down mm. with me, and some mm. small ones. Tremendous! And this is my dad. Oh, we almost saw him. Drop the camera. Perfect. Oh wow! Oh, isn't that fantastic? When he was at art school, everyone had to make a self-portrait and they all had these white coats on. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm sure there were about a bunch of these portraits all the same. I love it. Everyone yeah. in their lab jacket. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, That's yeah, he's with me here in my studio. Yeah, that is great. And, you know, when you were saying that your first show you we're thinking of your dad. I totally understand that. And it's different for me, but I remember for the first time of uh, really thinking a lot about my parents when I did this adventure race. It was a two-day adventure race and it and yet and it was, you know, you just did everything in it, kayaking, mountain biking, hiking, swimming, blah blah blah, but I remember running. Oh, I know because my parents were going to meet me at a station just to say hi. But there's this thing where you're doing something pretty big mm. and not really what they think about you. It's what you think about them thinking about you. <laughs> it's more. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, I know. I know. And it's, but it's, I mean, 
it's meaningful. It's important uh, to yeah. us. So. It, it's meaning. It's meaningful. I think. Really think. My my dad was also a very funny man, and I really think that I inherited this. Uh, of course, the artistic side. Uh, mind you, I'm not so musical as he was, but the artistic side and and the fun side. He had a great sense of humor, and and I don't seem very funny at the moment, but I can be. Oh. Uh, and uh, and I've done a lot of comedy, of course, on stage. But it's, I, I'm so grateful uh, that he gave me this. I think I inherited it, and and the love for for art and for creating stuff that's and being great. creative. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's great to hear because I didn't yeah. come. I had a, I have a creative family, but in various ways. Um, I'm just looking at my notes here. So I asked you about starting and painting, and then one of my questions was, "What inspire?" I'm looking at my computer here. What inspires you, and how do you bring that into your art? And is it conscious or unconscious? Can you speak? To I think that uh, basically, I think it's unconscious. I am. I am. I'm very interested in um, what lies beneath anything in people. Uh, what do we show? What do we not show? And also in paintings, you can see something coming through a layer uh, and that interests me where I put a layer over something for some reason. Yeah. Uh, and and, and um, that could be conscious, but I think mainly it's unconscious. Uh, and it can be uh, it can be anything in in life. I can walk past something beautiful. I remember being in Rome, uh, and in Rome they let all the buildings get old instead of just putting new um, cement over them. So you right. can see the, the different shades of color and the cracks, and and you can see you can see the the uh, the years or the decades. Uh, behind or in the same wall, uh, yeah. you know, from from the whatever eighteen hundreds or seventeen hundreds till today, yeah. Uh, and and I think that's fabulous. I I really I love that. Yeah. And and I think it's it is very interesting. Um, this thing, what is underneath this color, this layer? What's underneath in us? Uh, what is it that we want to show the world and what is it that we want to hide? <laughs> and, yeah. and, um, uh, and it's the same with the painting. I can, I can almost ask a painting, what are you hiding from me? What do I need to do so you can bring that out? I love that question. That's yeah. A, never ask myself that or my painting. I often ask it, what do you want from me? But that, uh, what are you hiding from me? Is a really, it's an interesting question, especially for someone who's never asked it because it's all about mindset and changing your perspective sometimes so that you can continuously draw things out from yourself. But maybe you're, yeah. maybe it's a little bit more uncomfortable. Mm. And, and I can say, I can also talk to the painting and say, I am hiding something from me uh, because it is not in the painting. Either right. you don't want it, or, uh, I mean, the painting doesn't want it, or I do not want to give it to the painting. Uh, right. For some, I do not want to, I can have a thought, I can have a wish, I, I wish I was loser, I wish I was uh, more bold in color or in brush strokes or whatever, but for some reason it is not happening now. I love that question too, because you're right. That. You know, I'm standing there many times wondering why I'm not doing what I want to do. And I'm trying, or I think I'm trying, or maybe I'm trying too hard. And, or maybe I don't even want it there. Like really, maybe I'm yeah. scared there. Yeah. And, and that, and that, that um, makes me come back to, to, uh, this that I said, what what am I hiding from myself mm -hmm. that I do not want to give to the world or give to the painting so it can give it to the world? Yeah. Uh, and and 
because it stops me. And, and like you said, sometimes I wish I was bolder. I wish I couldn't care less about the outcome of a painting. Uh, and, and, and I do. Yeah, I, I do. I, I wanted to represent me. I wanted to be sometimes beautiful or pretty or, uh, or scaring. Or I remember once when I had my more black and white period, I had an exhibition in the south of Sweden. It was a group exhibition. I remember this lady in is it was it was uh, Easter time. She was wearing a fur, and and she was walking past my paintings. And after her ran this little man in a black coat with a hat. And there was an old couple, and she almost ran past my paintings. And she said, "Oh my God, they're horrible." Oh wow! Meaning not meaning ugly. Uh, I don't think, but meaning it was too dark, too yeah. black, too frightening or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget that. <laughs> she stormed oh. past and this little man after her, jogging after her. Uh, <laughs> I'm having a black gun. But you know, I remember actually running into some people years ago here, not that long ago, that I often ran into walking dogs. And one day they were talking say we really have to come to your house and look at your paintings in your gallery now you've got a gallery I had one in the lower part of my house and she goes your paintings really changed like a few years ago they were like all brown and black and like you were must have going been going through something really dark and I said no I was going through a limited palette <laughs> <laughs> I love that <laughs> like I Oh, that was such a funny assumption just because I decided that if I really wanted to try abstraction, I was actually going to go easy on myself and limit my palette so I could focus on the materials, design, space division, and let's not add so much color into it that I just, you know, bury myself. So I took a very limited palette and played around with that and then six months later i added another color in you know and it was like so strategically i thought it was brilliant really so i didn't overwhelm myself and she thought i was going through a dark period and it was just like no <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, i've heard that too about my paintings and 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 or 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 it's it's more pastel and they say oh my god you're feeling so good irene you must be really happy <laughs> I'm not so sure about that, but the paintings are happy. Maybe you're happy looking at it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's true that certain uh, colors and shapes and all that can evoke certain feelings and thoughts from us, but don't assume that's what we're going through just because we're doing it right. No, yeah. no, no, yeah. no, it doesn't have to do with that. I, yeah. Mind you, I, I must say, so this is my what do you say, sanctuary, my small, this, this uh, is a very small studio. It's only about 24, 25 square meters. And yeah. um, I just love it here. This is my, I'm always, always happy here, except for the, you know, the start of the first year of the pandemic. That was really awful. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be yeah. happy. Any. There was just so much unknown. And uh, now it's the, that there was a new norm and now there's another new norm that we're, you know, so that's good. The whole yeah. vaccine and yeah. whatnot. Yeah. Um, so I had asked you about, yeah, that what inspires you and what brings, what, how you bring it into your work. And then I had jotted down, um, let's just see our time here. That's good. Um, so one of the things if you want to talk about your process, is, is there anything that you find that trips you up? And then how do you, how do you maneuver yourself um, through that? Or, you know, any tips that you'd share about that or, or just, even yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I can, <laughs> I have this, I can go back to this painting. Let's see if you can see it again. Uh, this one on the easel. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, as soon as I find something that is really beautiful, like I, I poured paint on, on, it's not a raw canvas, it's, it's, a, it's, it's gessoed, gessoed. But yeah. I love this sheerness of this, mm -hmm. you know? 
So I want to save it because I think it's so beautiful. So then what do I do with the paints? And then I fell in love with this piece here. And we talked about this in, in our conversation over Zoom, you and I. When I, when I want to save things because it's so beautiful, I have to maneuver the whole painting around that spot. Sure. And, and that really trips me up. Yeah. Uh, and let me see if you can see. And also, there's a bit here that I really loved. And I've done it so many times. I've ruined so many paintings because I love a square, I mean, five square inches in a painting. You know that everyone that listens to this video is going to all sit there and nod their head because we all <laughs> do that. Yes. I mean, but that's the thing that when I, that's why I do a lot of painting. So I, what I do, and then this is what I recommend to artists as well that ask, I leave them. Now, if you have a series, I'll leave the thing that I love. I'll leave that painting and I'll enjoy loving it from a distance while I work on everything else. Mm. And by the time I get back to it, I got other stuff I'm loving, so now I can move on to this one. I don't love it anymore because I'm loving <laughs> that, it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I used to take uh, some of the paintings, especially uh, the the bigger ones. I, I I take them home and I hang them on the wall and let them hang there for a couple of weeks. And, and every time I walk past it, if there is something that upsets me, like a, a square inch of, or a or a brush stroke or or a charcoal line or something that I feel every time I walk past it, this is not right, then I know I have to change it. If yeah. it's okay, then I know it's fine and I love it. But I, 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 I can be really radical. I, can, I know sometimes that if I'm falling in love with a small piece in, in the painting and I'm trying to steer the whole painting around that little lovely piece in the middle or wherever it is, I know I have to be very radical and just erase it. Yeah. Yeah. Get the white paint out or black paint or whatever and cover it up. Yeah. And and it's it's scary and it's sad, but usually it works because that is that is what's holding me up is saving that thing. It's true. It's true. And you know, mm. we all do it and I do it and uh uh, and sometimes you can uh, keep a, pe a part of that painting and you can pull it together. But more often than not, when we find the spot, it's amazing because you're, you're now you're almost trying to master manipulation, right? The whole thing, yeah. the whole thing in order to save that one little spot. So, yeah, yeah. yeah it's losing, losing it. Sacrificing the lamb is what I say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so true, so true. Yeah, it, it can feel horrible to do it, but more often than not, it's the only thing that works, at least for me. Yeah. I have to just destroy what I love and then see if I can love something else. Yeah, I, you know, I before I uh, really connected with more artists on Instagram, Facebook, uh, with, um, you know, I took CVP with Nick Wilton a couple yeah. of years ago. And, but, and I learned through these artists and with uh, his course that you have to do that. But I did that before I ever talked to any other artists. It w and what happened was I would be painting away and I would have this gorgeous spot there. And then I'd be like, oh, you know, and then I'll add that there and that will help that. And, all that kind of stuff. And I could spend hours basically uh, manipulating the whole piece for that spot. And I would get, it was like two personalities. I was loving what I was doing and hating what I was doing at the same time. And eventually the, the amount of love went down and the amount of getting frustrated. And then I get, I get so frustrated. I would just reach for a paintbrush like, and it wasn't even like I was thinking. And I would scoop up whatever color and I would just <laughs> run, run over it. And my head's going, no, but my arm is like, no, 
we're not having this anymore. And then I would reach for a rag to like save it and get wipe it off. But by the time I looked back, I actually was like, oh, wow, it's fresh. <laughs> yes, There's I know. I know. Now. And so I would do that. I don't know. And I would think, what's wrong with you? You just spent four hours and now you just covered it up. But I found that a lot of artists will just get frustrated and say, that's it. I'm getting rid of that thing. Yeah. And I never understood that I had to do that because I was painting myself into a corner, basically. Yeah. I did that today. I will show you. Yes, do that. Uh, we I, I was so frustrated and fed up with this painting. It, I was trying to make another one in this series. Uh, there we see? go. Yeah. And, and I wanted to save this because I love it. Uh-huh. Uh, and I had some other stuff there, and, and I just couldn't get it, so it it wasn't working. So I just took out the grays and the browns and just covered the whole thing up. I still yeah. saved this. Sure. <laughs> I know this will have to go. <laughs> because I said, I'm not going to get it together. You got rid I, of everything else but the thing that you love. I love it. <laughs> uh, so I got rid of the things that I didn't love, and I saved the one that I loved, and I know that I... I, what do you say? I, I kicked it out. So I need to get rid of this that I love. So we'll see. But I got so fed up with myself and I, I said, that's it, you know. That's yeah. it. But uh, the lower part has to go. Uh, I mean, the thing that I really like has to really go. And we'll start again. Mm -hmm. Start I again. Know. It's brutal. Uh, I think I talked to you about this, and I said if you could just cut that piece out and put it over yeah. there, and get the painting going, and then bring it back, it probably work just beautifully. Yeah, yeah. But then again, sometimes, sometimes, as you said, Pauline, sometimes uh, when I get crazy and I think this is not working, and I take white paint or whatever, and you know, out of frustration and anger at myself and at the painting. I just paint, you know, furiously yeah. for for a couple of hours, and 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 sometimes those paintings are the best ones I've done. Same. I just, I... <laughs> I know, it's like, do we have to be a lunatic to get a good painting of ourselves? Probably, yeah, probably. <laughs> so I had asked you um, the other day uh, to think about. Oh, maybe I didn't. But anyway, uh, you did get this question. So you're a wise woman. You're older now than you were five years ago, mm -hmm. and you've got more experience. If you looked back now at a younger version of yourself, what would you advise that younger version of yourself um, just to help your journey or ease <laughs> some of your... Yes. Pain. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. Pain. Uh, what would you say to yourself back then? Now, what, what, you, with what you know now? Yeah, I think that I would have. Uh, I would tell myself not to be so worried about what other people think about my paintings or about me, uh, about anything, uh, because it, in the end, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the people that love you love you for who you are, not what you paint. And and so you can paint away and do whatever you like because the people that you love and the people that you need hopefully love you as you are. And 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 they care for you and they think you're a great person. So sometimes I think that when we try to... Um, we want to be so uh, successful. We want to paint well. We want to make beautiful or interesting paintings that we, we trip ourselves up thinking that if I just make this, uh, this uh, um, um, opening show, if it's successful, people buy paintings or they, whatever, uh, I am a successful person. It doesn't really, it doesn't, it's not the same thing. I just want to, I wish I'd known that uh, earlier, even as an actor. Uh, mm that they don't love you, they love what you do on stage. Mm -hmm. And when people come and see your paintings, 
they don't love you they love your paintings mm -hmm. it's i am not my paintings mm -hmm. and i think that would be have been helpful to me it would have made me bolder mm -hmm. i would have experimented more mm -hmm. oh yes now you know it's interesting because i totally understood what you said and yet as soon as you said, I'll watch this again, but as soon as you said, like they're, they're this, the, the, you're making them. And they're, you're, they're both you, but they're not you. Yes. Yeah. You know, and they can live simultaneously, but you have to be able to understand those two different levels of this is Pauline and this is Pauline's work. And, you know, this is Irene and this is her work and maybe yeah. trying something she's never tried before and it looks a certain way that maybe doesn't look like the way I normally work, but I'm trying something. So that's the brave Pauline doing something, but they're not, mm. this, this is a result and this is the person trying this thing out, right? Mm. Yes. Because I sometimes I teach acting. I, I've never taught a um, painting, which is interesting. I, I would love to do that. Uh, but when I paint my, uh, when I, sorry, when I teach my acting students, I have to make sure that they understand that who they are is not, I mean, they, as when you act, you put yourself into your role. And when you paint, you put yourself into the painting. Right. But they're not the same. If people don't like your painting, doesn't mean that they don't like you. Right. Uh, yeah. And. And just because some people don't like the work you do doesn't mean it's not good work. That's right. Some other people might like it very much. So I wish I'd known that uh, so much earlier. Um, I know it now, at least sometimes. <laughs> well, and the, and the reality <laughs> too is that, is I think especially when you're trying something new or you're struggling, you can lose sight of that fact that they're separate. Mm, uh, mm, you know, because mm. you something that doesn't represent what it is that you're after. But I mean, we all have to go through growing pains and we're yeah. always evolving and we're always trying something new. If we're not trying something new, we're, we're dying. Like we're not, yeah. we're, we're not breathing anymore. Mm -hmm. so, and it's a, it's a flow, right? I mean, sometimes you're having a great day and sometimes you're not, sometimes you're doing things the way you want. Sometimes you're not. Mm. And, um, we have to make space for that. We have to make yeah. space for all of that. Otherwise, you're not going to be a happy artist. No, no. You need to allow yourself to fail if you fail. But you don't really fail because you learn something. And, and you can take it into the next painting. But you have to let go of being perfect, of making the perfect painting. Although, as I told you earlier... <laughs> Every time I, I start a new painting, I hope and I wish for it to be my best painting ever. Yeah. Every time. And and sometimes, yes, it's a good painting. And most of the time it's not. And I have to work and work and work and work. And, and kill my darlings on the canvas over and over again. And, and I just keep on working because I know if I keep on working and, and then set it aside for a couple of weeks and then go back and work. I will sort it out and it'll be a painting that I like and hopefully that I love that will make my heart sing. Yeah. And um, I have a few of those that I really think really makes my heart sing. And this is what I wish for every time. Sure, sure. Well, you know, it's a journey and yeah. And we're not going to have what we, we're not going to have that joyous event every day because we're always striving. And when you're striving, there's, you know, I was often compared to hiking because, you know, to get that good view, you've got to climb the mountain and yeah. there are great views along the way, but it's not always easy. And sometimes you're thinking, what, whose idea was this anyway? You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're not going to get, whatever but there are many beautiful things along the way and we have to pay attention we also have to pay attention to the fact that we're trying even if it's hard yeah. like yeah. we're doing it you know so um in a few minutes i'm gonna see if there's any questions but i'm first gonna see if there was anything else that i'd asked 
Um, no, that's good. Okay. So I think somebody had asked, I'm just going to swing down to the quit. I'm going to read a couple of these comments because they won't show up later. Um, just people saying hi. Um, Jim says, everything is beautiful. You are both great women. That was, and he said, thanks. That was Jimmy. Um, we just swing down here. Okay, there we go. So that's what Jimmy said. And then somebody had asked how many paintings have you made? Which, I mean, if somebody asked me that, I couldn't tell you like lots and lots and lots. Do you, do you know? Irene. I have no idea. I don't know. But hundreds, it's and hundreds. hundreds and hundreds. Yes, because I have exhibited and, and I've been selling for a long time. Yeah. So it's yeah. and, and it's so many. I I I don't. I buy already uh, mounted canvases. Yeah. Uh, I've mounted so many, and it's hard work, especially the big ones, the really bastard sometimes. Excuse my language. Uh, to get them right and um so but it's it's very very many and i just wanted to say also that um although it's hard work and yeah i can we can get disappointed over that we're not doing what we set out to do that day or whatever uh it doesn't didn't turn out the way i wanted i refuse to kill my darling but i will in the end uh you know it's a great job it's it, it makes me painting more actually than acting it makes me feel alive and connected to myself in a way i didn't do it as an actor so i just love it i'm so thankful uh for the gift which is my interest the gift might not be i am the greatest painter but the gift is the interest I can do this until I die. Yeah. I'm t I'm so with you on that, Irene. I have learned so much about myself. I surprise myself a lot, which it's not a brag statement. I actually because as a child I don't even think and even in a, a, uh in my 20s and 30s, I thought I didn't have an imagination. I saw everybody else doing cool stuff and I didn't think I had an imagination. Wow. And so, artists now and I remember standing at the blank canvas and not knowing what to do. And somehow I found my way with, you know, books I read, studying that I did on my own, uh, on my own. I did go to art school, but it didn't teach me how to deal with blank canvas. But I, as an artist, I learned more in my own studio about art and about me. And I constantly surprise myself because I will not... Um, you know, I'll fail over and over. I don't care how many paintings I ruin. Uh, I just want to keep trying to explore and identify things that represent me and things that I love and make decisions on, you know, might go back and forth with design and then just true expression or listening to my intuition. And that journey has taught me so much about myself over the last 10 years. It's been amazing. And I love mm. that. I never trade that in. And it sounds like that's mm. because you're constantly having a conversation between you and your painting. Your painting's talking back to you. It's like this amazing relationship, really. Mm. Me. Mm. And also, don't you find, Pauline, that I find myself so much more attentive to uh, details uh in in as i told you about rome the buildings in rome but, but i can you go hiking and find you see a, a leaf a leaf laying on a piece of rock or something and you find oh god that's a wonderful color combination and things my my husband always says you see things irene i would never see yeah yeah and i i find that too and i Ever since I moved here to the Okanagan, I've been here 10 years, uh, this is the space that I've really devoted to my art practice. And I'm amazed at how more curious I am as a human being. And I do see so much more. Like when I'm yeah. hiking, like you said, oh my God, you know, like that thistle. I had no idea that deep down underneath there were all these little spots underneath all that purple stuff. You know, when we see a thistle, it's like mm. this big, massive hairdo of purple sticking up. 
But, you know, just a week or so ago, I was looking at those details and I love that I'm seeing more. I'm yeah. seeing more and I even think um, more deeply. I'm a lot more curious about the animals and birds and the environment and the weather and the clouds. Like, it's like I woke up. I woke yeah. up as an mm. artist. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Honestly, um, if you want, let's just see. Limited palette, nodding. So true. It's so relevant. Um, everyone thinks art making is joyous and fun, but it can be really anxiety inducing. And that is by Atomic Trigger. Thanks for sharing that because it's true, you know. And watching videos online, too, we in Instagram, we only show, you know, the good stuff, right? We're not going to show how we're... <laughs> pulling our hair out and having a temper tantrum, right? Although maybe that would be an interesting post. Uh, <laughs> yes. Sal no, but I don't mind. I mean, you saw my ugly, ugly painting that I have to, I mean, I killed everything that I sort of uh, didn't like and still kept the one, the piece I liked. <laughs> I know, <laughs> that's um, Sally is loving your honesty. Thank you. And um, Art of Shabnam Habib says it's tr so true to Atomic Trigger. Do you use other mediums or do you just use... Now, it's interesting because this person said, do you use other mediums or do you j just use ACT? And I'm not quite sure what that means because I'm not sure if they're asking if you just ACT because you said that you... Um, paint do you have oh. any okay uh do i work with it i mean creatively in other fields is that the question or well, let, why don't you answer that because we have to guess because i didn't i didn't understand the question well i, I can answer it two way do i work with other mediums yeah, i work with acrylic i work with crayons i work with pastels and you know and and paper and and all that that was the answer to one question and the other one is I have also written a book. So uh, I do enjoy writing, which I never thought was my thing. But I believe if you are creative, you are creative in many fields. Uh, your creativity can come out in a painting. It can come out in, a, uh, in, in acting. It can come out in, in writing. Uh, it can come out in many fields. Uh, and sometimes you choose the one that you feel is easy for you. And mind you, painting isn't always easy, as we said. Uh, but I decided, I mean, I decided to write this book and I actually finished it. And, and I was surprised, so surprised that what my medium is now only uh, painting. It, right. That was the answer of the question. I don't know. It was. And someone said that um, the person meant acrylic. So you did yeah. answer the question because uh, she uses, as do I, <clears throat> all sorts of materials, mixed media, pastels and whatnot, but you also have written a book and that's amazing. That's amazing. What's the name of it if anybody wants to look it up? Uh, it's in Swedish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, so you it's, co it's book called, book. it's a book about me uh, in the situation with my child. Oh. Uh, and and uh, it's not about how it is to have a disabled child. It's about the choices that I've had to make. Uh, like painting instead of acting, which has been great for me. So uh, it's called Altid mit barn in Swedish, and in English that would be always my child. Oh, awesome. So, um, but I can recommend, uh, I mean, even if it's only for your own fun or maybe not fun, uh, to if you're a creative person, you can be creative in many things. Don't think it's only the one thing. That's right. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So Sally Ann says, I absolutely agree. I'm super grateful that we have the feeling, emotion, and ability to do this. And um, <coughs> I'm going to choose because now we've only got six minutes. Uh, there was something about living off of selling painting. Sometimes I've always wanted to do mm -hmm to do that but I've had to take on another career despite I went to art college um 
What are you doing with paintings that you don't sell? Uh, so with a couple, we've only got, let's say, three minutes, uh, because if we go over, we won't get this on. But did you want to speak to any of that? Um, I just want to say, I, I've always had, I've worked, um, I, I teach acting, uh, and, uh, and I've done other jobs as well. Uh, and so I haven't been able to live off of my art. Uh, I have sold a lot, and I've, I've actually paid tuition for other trainings that I have. Uh, off of my art but uh, you know that would the, the, I, I, ha I have representation in Stockholm and so I have a gallery that I exhibit in but that's only you know every second year or every third year so you don't do that every year so I couldn't have lived off of my art but that doesn't stop me from painting and now with, with the, with the uh, internet you can you can sell via online you know uh, galleries and things but um yeah and if i don't sell them and they get old and i don't like them anymore i paint over them so do i for sure yeah, oh. yeah. absolutely yeah. yeah um i heard something really interesting this morning i uh, forget who said it she was uh, talking about teaching photography but, uh, and I get this a lot too, people ask a lot of questions about what material, what's that crayon, what's that um, charcoal, is it water salt, where'd you buy it, all these kind of things. And this, this photography teacher said, she got questions like, what's the name of, what brand is that camera? And she said, if that's what you're worried about, you're not actually taking pictures. <laughs> and I thought, wow, I really love that because it's like, it's, and I, I shake my head and I'm thinking, it's not about that crayon. Mm -mm. It's not, I'm not even going to answer that. I mean, it's fun mm -hmm. to try stuff for sure. But don't focus so much on that brand or whatever, because it isn't that. So the equivalent is if you're worried about the, you know, the right supply, you're not making, you know, you're not painting. <laughs> I will, I will, I will end with. I will end as some one of one teacher I had in acting school in London, a Shakespearean older actress. Uh, we were complaining about the size of the room where we were working in, and she said, she said, it is not the size of the room that will make you a great actor. So I would say it's not the size of the canvas. It's not the color in your in your in your paint tube. It's not the size of your brush that will make you a great painter. Yeah, yeah. And I I gonna add to that and say, be curious instead yeah. of running out there asking for the answers. Look inside and ask yourself, if I want to make this kind of art, what do I have to do? Yeah. What do I want to change? What do I want to choose? What mm. do I want to mix? What do I want to try to yeah. actually be the kind of artist I want to be? The answer's in here, not... Yeah. Nah. That's no. just you trying to figure it out out there, right? Like the pain <laughs> and all that, right? And it's fun. But also, I think you're so right, Pauline. If you're curious, no, you're not only going to paint better, uh, you're going to have a better life. Uh, yeah. To be curious is, is a gift. It's bliss to be curious because you will always have something to, to, to think about, to try to solve, to try to figure out and be curious when you meet other people. That's great. Yeah, that's what's going to feed your soul. That's what's yep. going to be soul because that curiosity is coming from there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Irene, it's been so great. Uh, it's been so great. We could go on for a long time. So maybe we'll yeah, we could. So wonderful chatting with you. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much for inviting me, Pauline. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, you I was so surprised and so happy. So oh, thank good. you. Yes, it was great. Yes. Yeah, it's been really great. Thank you every, for, everyone for joining us and thank you again. And I'm really happy that you are open to saying yes to this question. Oh, I love adventures. Can't say no.
<laughs> okay. Well, take care. <laughs> take care. And thank you. Bye. Bye.